Uh, now I turn to Portuguese ambassador to India, uh, His Excellency uh, Carlos uh, Pereira Marques. Uh, uh, Excellency, uh, you, uh, my uh, question to you is, uh, let me briefly introduce, I mean, uh, uh, Ambassador Marques is a, is a veteran diplomat. He's served in uh, different capitals, uh, different countries, including Switzerland, Zambia. He's also served a diplomatic advisor to President of the Republic. Consul General in Johannesburg and Ambassador in Luxembourg. He has been Ambassador of Portugal and India for almost now uh, uh, close to two and a half years, if I'm not wrong. Uh, uh, so, uh, I mean, he has seen a bit, quite a bit of India now. Uh, so, Excellency, I turn to you with a couple of questions, uh, which is this, that, uh, you know, organizing the first India EU Summit in 27 plus one format, is really the high point of the Portuguese presidency of the EU. You know, it's something to be proud of. We know that the Portuguese uh, presidency played a proactive and pivotal role in nudging the EU leadership to restart uh, FTA negotiations. Is that a correct perception? Also, in what ways uh, Portugal shaped the success uh, of key outcomes of the May 8th summit? And uh, just a, a, you know, a, a follow-up question to that, which is that there are still some weeks to go for the Portuguese presidency. What concrete action can one expect uh, in terms of implementation of the ambitious agenda laid out in the summit? And Excellency, on a lighter note, how much do you think Prime Minister Costa's Indian origin influence Portugal presidency's attitude towards India and elevating India-EU relations? Over to you, sir. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Manish. Let me, first of all, to congratulate you for the wonderful title you chose for this uh, session. It's very inspiring. And it's a uh, pleasure being here with you and in such a good uh, company. Uh, well, first of all, as you so well said, we are, of course, very happy and very proud with the results of the Porto meeting. Well, let me say that uh, very early we, we set uh, India as one of the main priorities of uh, the Portuguese uh, EU presidency. And why? Because we found that the weight of, uh, uh, the, the, the weight, uh, of India in, in Asia and the Indo-Pacific wasn't proportional to its weight in the EU external agenda. We definitely needed to have more India in Europe. Um, and so why, why, why do you believe this? Because our belief is that in a multipolar uh, world, as the one we live today, we need to have balanced and diversified relations. And so definitely we have to have uh, more India in Europe. Um, and so that's why very early, in the, if I recall well, in December 2019, we had the idea of organizing this first ever uh, EU uh, India leaders meeting. So it's a, a non institutional summit. Uh, the novelty being that the Prime Minister of India, for the first time ever, could meet directly uh, all his uh, EU counterparts, heads of the state and government, and not only the President of the EU Commission and the EU Council, as usual. Uh, usually at the regular uh, summits. So uh, we launched this uh, idea in, in the end of uh, 2019. It was very well received both by India and the EU. Uh, meanwhile, the, the, the circumstances changed a lot. It was at the beginning of, of, the, of the pandemic. Uh, but uh, I, I think the evolution uh, proves also how right we were because this last... Uh, uh, here and a half just just prove how, how vulnerable and how interdependent we, we are and we really need to strengthen our relationships especially with those who share the same principles as as the, the democracy the rule of law the respect of human rights uh, and so uh, that's why uh, uh, we gave such a priority to to to, to india uh, so the idea of, of this EU leaders meeting was accepted. Then I, I also uh, want to, to emphasize uh, 
the, the, the meeting actually occurred at the peak of the second wave of the pandemic in India. And still, it wasn't postponed, it wasn't cancelled. It could have been, but there was such a strong political will to go ahead uh, with this idea. And it, it was such an important momento uh, that we decided to move forward. And, and uh, uh, of course, India has a decisive uh, word. And, and, and we are gr very grateful because they really wanted to have this uh, this, this uh, meeting during the Portuguese presidency. But then, uh, of course, having this first historic uh, EU leaders meeting was important. But we wanted to be more than a simple photo opportunity. It would be very nice, but uh, I mean, to, of course, uh, better to have very concrete uh, results and important deliverables. And of course, the economic area was a, a crucial uh, one. Uh, as Hugo already uh, referred, uh, the EU is uh, uh, the, the most important trade partner uh, uh, of India. Uh, the, the, the trade increased 72%, uh, more than 72% the last decade. The EU is also the, one of the, the, the most important foreign investor in India, and the investments in India more than doubled the last decade. Uh, so there was a huge potential, uh, and as we all know, these very important trade negotiations were blocked for more than eight years. Uh, so there was a, a great effort from both sides, uh, and of course, uh, we also, as presidency, we tried to, to help as much as possible. Um, an important factor, of course, it was the, the, the summit of July the EU summit of last uh, July. Uh, 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 as you know, the roadmap 2025 was approved and some, some new bodies were approved. And one of them was the high level dialogue on trade and investment. And the work of this new body was crucial for, for, the, for the, these the preparatory negotiations. Uh, because now we didn't have the negotiation just on a, a technical level, but also as a political level. Yes, because, you know, this high-level dialogue is presided on the India side by uh, Minister Goyal and on the EU side by the DG Trade, uh, Valdis Dombrovsky. Uh, so it had a, a, a political element that was definitely very important. And there was at least two meetings of the, this uh, uh, high-level dialogue on trade and investment before uh, the, the Porto meeting. So... Uh, technical uh, negotiations, uh, this, this uh, now a new element, the, 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 the political uh, level, but there was also a very strong political will from, from, from uh, the both sides, it was clear. What did we do as, as presidency? We tried to help as much as, as possible. There was also, of course, some uh, diplomatic work behind the scenes. Uh, our foreign minister, who was very, very, very keen since the beginning on our relationship with, the, with India. He had several meetings with Minister Jai Shankar, he had a meeting with Minister Goyal, he had a, me a meeting also with the Minister uh, Sitaraman. Uh, uh, our uh, Secretary of State for Internalization came here on April. He had meetings with the Secretary of State for Finance, with Minister Puri. Um, I met myself, uh, Minister Goyal. Minister Goyal himself, he also wanted to meet all the EU heads of missions to, to, to explain the, in, on all clarity the Indian position. And so our role was, was, was trying to, to establish a bridge. Uh, also, sometimes it's very important to clarify, clarify the positions, you know. So we try to understand better the Indian position, to understand better the, the EU uh, and the, the EU Commission position. And finally, uh, thanks uh, to a very strong uh, uh, political view from both sides, as I said, we could reach these this very positive uh, uh, results. And we are very, very, very happy with the, with the with these results, uh, not only concerning the, the, the uh, trade, but also in investment and in geographical indications. Now, the, the way uh, forward, um, you, you told that we still have uh, one month ahead. <laughs> you know, the leitmotif of the Portuguese uh, presence is, is a, a, a time to deliver for a digital 
uh, green and social transition. And we, we, we firmly believe it's, it's important to, to, to deliver. Uh, of course, our priority will be uh, the, the FTA and uh, investment negotiations. They are very important. Uh, as you know, the board in charge to follow up and, and to, 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 to take care of these negotiations is the high-level uh, dialogue on trade and investment. Uh, both parts want to have results uh, at the earliest possible uh, date. Of course, we know that they are very difficult and demanding, the demanding and complex negotiations, but that is definitely uh, a, a priority and we work on on that uh, and the india will remain uh, crucial for 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 the eu uh, it will be still a priority for for the slovenian presidency uh, next uh, september we will um, have this this eu uh, strategy on the indo pacific which is very important uh, so uh, i'm very very enthusiastic about about the, the, the perspective we have had uh, your last uh, question concerning uh, uh, our prime minister, and uh, you know, he really considers himself, uh, of course, a Portuguese citizen, but but also a representative of the India diaspora, diaspora, diaspora abroad, and, and that's why he displayed so proudly both his OCI card and his Portuguese um, the passport at the at the summit. I think I think uh, of course it, it helps. It helps, you know. And we have uh, between India and Portugal, we have. Uh, I mean, we, we meet for more than 500 under the year, so so we have a very important element of of trust between us. That that's that's uh, very very important. Uh, and of course, there's this personal relation uh, uh, of our prime minister with India also also helps. I cannot deny it, of course. Right. 